Hey, what's happening guys? Today, I want to talk about learning to read a schematic. It's going to be a very basic video, so if you already know how to read a schematic, you know, feel free to skip this. You won't hurt my feelings. But if you're new to electronics, then this might be something that you uh, will want to get into. Alright? So, if you've been playing around with electronic you know, for a while, or even if you're just getting started, I'm sure that you've seen plenty of schematics. And I'm just going to start off with something super simple here, okay? This is about as basic as we can get. Next thing we just want to add any values. And then you also notice you all often have what are called reference designators. So this might be labeled as R1 D1, BT1. I'm not going to get into the whole thing of uh, the res the reference designators. There's a lot going on there, but just know it's just basically a label. Okay. So the first step is to kind of understand the language of what we're talking about here. So we have components. In this case, there are one, two three, four components. And then you will generally have um, like a key on your schematic. So we might have listed R1 is a one kilo ohm resistor. And it might even be more information, you know, along the lines of Uh, one eighth watt, something like that. Then we have D2, which would be a five millimeter red LED. Uh, I forgot the switch, didn't I? <laughs> S1. So S1 might be labeled as a NO normally open SPST single pole single throw switch then we have BT1 which will probably be listed as simply 9 volt battery now what I've actually drawn here is not a 9 volt battery this is in fact a single cell so let's just uh, get down here. This this is a symbol for a cell. The, the the large line is your positive. The small line is your negative. So in most battery conditions, what we're talking about here would be uh, 1.2 to 1.5 volt. That's a cell. Now when we add more cells, then we have a battery. A battery is a collection of cells. So this would be a one, two, three cell battery. All right, just want to clear that up so we're not making any mistakes here. Now, we take an overall look at the circuit and we say, what does the circuit do? Well, I always like to start with our power source. In this case, it's the nine volt battery. And then we're just going to talk about conventional current flow, not electron flow. So let me, let me grab a different colored pen. Okay, so how is our current flowing? It's coming from the positive terminal of the battery through the resistor. And in this case, it's stopping at the switch. But, you know, if the switch were closed, it would move on. Then it moves through 
the LED until it finally returns to the negative terminal of the battery. So we have to have that circle, we have to have that closed loop for our circuit to work. Just you know, so you understand there. Now this is, like I said, as simple as we can get. This is a simple series circuit. If you want to think about it kind of linearly, the current only moves in one direction. And if you want to think about it in terms of time, this is our starting point. It's only moving in one direction clockwise until it reaches the negative terminal of the battery, which is our ending point. Boom. That's it. There's nothing else. Okay. So let's take that same circuit and draw it in a slightly different way. All right, now we have the exact same circuit, but it's drawn in a different way. It's drawn with what might be called a bus, or I like to call them rails. So we have two rails, one at the top, one at the bottom. The top rail is our VCC, which is not really the correct ter uh, ter terminology, but that is what is usually listed. VCC uh, stands for voltage of the collector. And in this case, it is our nine volt DC. At the bottom, we have our ground rail, or also known as the, our reference rail, and it uses the ground symbol. There we have our resistor, our switch, and our diode. So even though things are split up a little bit and a little bit different, everything still flows in exactly the same way. So to sum this up really quickly, we have a series circuit with four components. And in either way, when we close the switch, it creates a loop that allows current to flow. Okay? That's as simple as it gets. Now let's talk about a parallel circuit. Come over here and I'll draw a little simple parallel circuit. Okay, now we have a parallel circuit drawn here. Functionally, it is the same as this. It does the same thing. A switch turns on an LED that is current limited by the resistor. So let's take a look at this circuit and see how it differs. Well, instead of our resistor getting its current direct from the rail, and you notice in this case the rail is 12 volts, and in our original circuit it was 9 volts, but we still want 9 volts for our diode. So what we've done is we've created a voltage divider here to reduce that 9 volt, that 12 volts into 9 volts. And I've used a 330 ohm resistor and a 1K resistor. And that uses the voltage divider formula. And the voltage divider formula is V out is equal to the source voltage times R2 over R1 plus R2, just in case you didn't know. Now, so what's happening here is we're taking that 12 volt DC and we're dividing it. So if we follow our current flow, the current is coming here, flowing through the first resistor, flowing through the second resistor, and eventually going to ground. So this by itself is a complete circuit. But at the same time, at this node right here, the current is also coming this way. And then it flows through R3. It will flow through S1 when S1 is closed. It will then flow through D1 and eventually back to ground. So this is, in effect, 
a completely separate circuit. This is a parallel series circuit. What's happening here is happening. These two are occurring at the same time. The current is being branched off at this node right here and going in two directions. But what's important to note is they are happening simultaneously. It's not like it goes here, then it comes over here. This is happening at the same time. And that is your primary difference between your series circuit and your parallel circuit. Okay, so we've talked about our series and our parallel circuit schematics. Pretty easy once you just understand that things are going on at the same time when we're talking about parallel circuits. So let's take this one step further to the next logical steps and say how do we take this and turn it into a physical circuit onto a breadboard. Well, it's not hard, so don't worry. I'm going to take you through it. Now, this circuit here is just a flasher circuit, a blinker circuit, okay? There's an LED, and this, uh, this is actually one chip here. This is the CD4011BE. It is a quad two input NAND gate. And by quad, that means there are four separate NAND gates. You see here, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Those are the outputs for our four separate NAND gates. So that's quad, and they're two input because we have A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, A4, B4. They are two inputs. So what will happen here is when A1 and B1 are both high, Q1 will be low. Or, and that goes for all of the different things. All right, now let's analyze our circuit here with the schematic so we can see what's going on. We have our positive rail. Uh, we're going to go 12 volts on this. I don't know why I put 5 there. Probably because I was doing TTL stuff earlier. And uh, this is CMOS. So we're going to go up to 12 volts. Pin 14 is our VCC. So we know we're going to run a wire from 14 to our positive rail. Pin 7 is our ground. So we know we're going to run from 7 to ground. Let's bring in our breadboard. Now I have the chip here. We have a positive rail, the red, the negative rail, the blue. And this jumper over here is just for something else, so don't worry about it. We'll get to it. So pin 14, that's this one here. That goes to VCC. Pin I'm 7. Sure what went wrong? Well, thank you for chiming in, but nobody was talking to you. Pin 7 is our ground. So, just maybe draw a little through them so we know that we connected them. Now, pin 1 is going to be um, like a switch, kind of. So we'll take pin 1, and for now, we're just going to hold it low. All right. Pin two, whoops, oh, pin one. Pin two has a one meg resistor and goes to ground. So we get a one meg resistor from pin two to ground. Now, pin three is our inverting output, and it's going to go to a 100K resistor going to ground and then over to our next stage. So I'm just going to take a wire from pin 3, and I'm just going to bring it over here, and then we have our 100K resistor going to ground. Now we look here, and we have pins 5 and 6 
which are jumpered together. So we take a little jumper, seven, six, and five, five and six, just like that. And then we need to go from a point between pin three and five and six. And we'll just take it from right here. And that can go to either five or six because they're jumpered together. So we connect them up just like that. So all those connections are made. Now we need a 1K resistor from our VCC rail. That's our current limiting resistor for the LED. Our LED longer leg is the anode, so that goes like this. Then we have a little jumper going across there like so. That goes to our capacitor, which is a 4.7 uh, microfarad. And that will, that will uh, be our timing capacitor. That goes to ground. And then we take our output of pin 4. And it goes to a point between the LED and the capacitor. Oops. Gonna make sure I got my pins in the right holes. Or she will not work. And we can just put that down there like that. Doesn't matter if it's up here or down there. Electrically, they are both the same. Now, one convention you want to keep in mind for good schematic design is that you want your inputs to go to the left outputs to the right so the circuit flows this way just like you're reading we did that and I just want to to mention that there okay so next we'll hook everything up always hook up my grounds first and when we power it up we should get a nice blinking LED there we go. Pretty easy to do, right? Now, if I change this and hold this high, you see it stays lit. So that's kind of like a switch there. But I hope you guys can understand how that works and how easy it is to just follow along, starting start with your power, then your inputs, then your outputs, and put it all together and make it happen. Pretty cool, right? I think so. So if you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to get into more complicated schematic reading, let me know down below and we'll move along with this. Because this is, you know, this is a pretty important part of getting started with electronics or learning electronics as we say here at <laughs> learn electronics all right that's it i'm out peace